Hi everyone! Welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Stitcher. My name is Megan. You can find me on Instagram as Megan underscore Babauta underscore or on Ravelry as Mama Made VM. If you're having troubles finding me, go ahead and click the down bar. I will have links to those below. But as I say, you are all very welcome here. So I don't have much to talk about this week, but I do have some StitchCon updates. So that'll be fun. I'll save that to the very end. And you guys know me. I just like to hop right in and I'm going to start with my starts. So on Friday of last week, um, Bridgen from the Museum Stitcher and I decided to go ahead and start the Autumn Cloche by Hello Liz Matthews. We both absolutely love this pattern. I think that Alexis is going to be starting this at some point too with us, <laughs> um, but I love this pattern. It's so cute. I fell in love with the cover photo. I love the colors on it and everything, so I really wanted to mimic that look. Um, the only thing I want to mention right off the bat is there is an error in the DMC conversion list on the back here. So 844 is actually supposed to be you know, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'll insert a picture here. Um, and that is called DMC Winter White. So it's, there's supposed to be a creamy shade in there. Um, I actually purchased the Leo and Roxy conversion for this. So I'm using all of those flosses. And I'll show you those. So here's my conversion. Sorry, it's such a mess. <laughs> but they are absolutely beautiful. And the obsidian colorway, I just went ahead and took out. And I replaced it with eggshell by Classic Colorworks. I just had this one in stash and looking at the pictures of the winter white, I knew that it was like a slightly creamy white shade and I thought that that would work just fine. So really loving these. Very easy to stitch with, um, nice and smooth. They're kind of like a, I would say similar feel to DMCs. They feel identical to DMCs to me, but you get a bit more in each skein. Let's see. Yeah, you get eight yards, so great great deal and they're also slightly variegated and I personally love that effect so yeah these are stunning love that uh, and here is my progress I'm stitching this on the Stitch Me Sand Dollar the 36 count linen and I know I have very little margin <laughs> but pretty much what I'm thinking is I'm gonna put this on like a sticky board and then frame it after that because of the fact that I have such a little margin, but here is where I got to. So hopefully that's not too see-through. I'm loving the effect, not only of this sand dollar colorway of the fabric, I love it. Oh my gosh, I'm showing you guys the back. That's the back. Look at how nice it is. <laughs> oh gosh, apparently I didn't have enough coffee. I just chugged a bunch of it, but it was not enough. Okay redo here's the front <laughs> so here is the front and I am really loving this so I got a couple of the butterflies done I got the whole top of the little cloche done because I was a little concerned <laughs> with the margins um to be honest I kind of just didn't imagine that it was going to be this wide I don't know why because obviously the pattern tells you like if you're using a 36 count it's going to be 15 and 7 eighths an inch by 9 and 5 eighths an inch so this fabric across I think is like 18 yeah uh so I only have like an inch and a half on each side <laughs> but oh well it's good enough and then I gave myself like a two inch margin at the top and like I said I'll just put it on a tacky board like a sticky foam board and then I will frame the board itself so it should be just fine I'm really liking this project um I love it look at the little bird it's so cute I'm sitting at one over two on the 36 count and really loving that effect this is a mad for minders needle minder down here and I use the John James gold needles I don't know I like them it's funny, um, I've only ever used those needles and the ladies at um, Floss Toss, they just added these to their shop. So good to know, good place to get them. Um, I know some people have problems threading the John James needles because the eye is not very large, but if you have a needle threader, I'd imagine that wouldn't really matter. Um, I don't use a needle threader and I haven't had too many issues, but I do see, I do see how that could become an issue. <laughs> So I'm enjoying this. The one thing that I've changed so far is 
The called fors for the conversion would be Gomez and Charcoal to be in the wing of the bird up here. And when I stitched that, I think I might have a picture. So I'll insert a picture if I do have one. If I don't, um, just take my word for it. <laughs> Unfortunately, the called for of those two are very, very similar in contrast. And that just kind of made it to where you actually couldn't see the two different shades at all. So what I did was I went ahead and picked that out and I took the colorway smoke, which came in the pack. So no extra cost to me and um, stitched it up with smoke and it turned out great. I think that looks fantastic. It looks exactly like the cover. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm just gonna keep on using the cover as a reference more so than the actual like chart itself for colors because I love the colorways on the front. I want this look overall. It took me forever to pick fabric. like. On Friday, I was still looking at fabrics for my stash because I have a good stash of fabrics now. And I have this 32 count London Fog by Jackson Fabric Arts. And um, I thought that would be absolutely stunning, but I don't know, I'm, I'm glad with this. I'm glad it's working out. I'm just gonna keep on doing the conversion based off of the look and the contrast of the colors more so than the chart, as I was saying. So I'm enjoying this. Um, if you're gonna, Kit this up if you're gonna start stitching it, make sure you pay attention to the fact that 844 was a misprint um, and you'll have to add in some kind of creamy white shade. I'm not sure if the MPI was a misprint. I didn't see the story. I don't know if I mentioned that to you guys. Um, the designer posted to their story. I missed it, but luckily there's so many amazing people in this community and I think it was Bridgen who messaged me and said, that there was a mistake. <laughs> so um, I'm glad she caught that and that saved um, saved us all from making the mistake. So yeah, it's, it's going well. The next project though, cause that was my only start this week. I have this one in a me made bag. I showed you guys this one last week as well. This is the one that I pulled out last night. Um, I just really enjoyed working on it. I didn't want to put it down. This is Little House, Little House Needleworks Suffrage Act. It's a little bit of an older pattern. It's from 2019, but it is so cute. I really enjoy it. And I am using all the called for flosses. There is a DMC that was called for to do the skin tone, which they have it as a pale person's skin tone. Um, I didn't, I didn't put that in the project bag and I was really lazy and I didn't want to get up and get it. <laughs> so, um, I just ended up pulling a floss from a project that was like nearby. So I grabbed peach by Weeks Dye Works and that was still like a pale skin tone. So it suited my skin tone and here is my progress. So I finished the hat, I started pulling the dress down, and then I got the little pole there, which is going to be her flag. There is supposed to be, I think, a stripe of red on her cuff, but I don't know, I wasn't obsessed with that. Um, honestly, the sash, it goes down this way as well, and I might... I might actually stitch the sash with a deep purple color, because my alterations I wanted to make to this project were to do the bunting in the like purple, gold, and white shades. I think I'm still gonna do that, but because this is a reflection of 1920, women's right to vote, I think I will do the flag she's holding as an American flag, so that all ties together, and then I'll put her sash as a purple sash. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, I also went in here and added more to the bricks down below. Happy with this progress. I love these Morgan hoops. Um, when I'm done with a project for the night, I just kind of untwist it. So this is like not super tight in here. So I like to, I love it because it's just easy. I just have to like, you know, wind that down. But I'm loving this. And this is stitched on, I think a 32 count. Yeah, 32 count Wren by Picture This Plus, which is a really nice fabric. Pretty similar to Sand Dollar, honestly, just slightly more brown in tone or beige, I suppose. But yeah, I'm liking this. It's super fun. Um, I especially like that the bricks, in my opinion, really do look like bricks. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I just, I like this one a lot. I've been wanting to pull it out. And I know it probably gets boring, like seeing the same project all the time, but I just really like it. Um, and I'm, I, I like how we have like this themed bag with it. Now I'm thinking to myself though, like what the heck else am I gonna put in this bag? <laughs> 
Uh, the next thing I pulled out, I don't know if you guys caught it, but I did a couple of lives this week. I did one on Instagram and two on YouTube, and I've been really enjoying doing that when I can find the time. Unfortunately, I'm going back to work, so I'm gonna be like part-time, and that's gonna make it to where I don't have as much time to do lives, but um, I'll squeeze them in when I can. And during that time though, I worked on this project, which is my Teresa Coquit Come to the Garden. I honestly could not put this one down. I didn't even wanna put it down. I really enjoyed working on this project this past week. So I worked on it for a few days and on the weekend, we took um, our daughter to this, I think it's called Catapult. It's like a kid's place where there's like a bunch of blow up toys, like big, huge slides and jumpy houses and stuff like that. So she had a lot of fun. Um, I think she got sick there though. <laughs> so, um, and I have this, by the way, I forgot to mention in a bag that Alexis made me and her channel is Alexis um, underscore my amazing world. And I love it. It's so big. I love how much room it has. I am stitching this one in all the called for colors, which is like every single brand, <laughs> but it's, it's worth it to me because I, I love the look of it. This one I'm stitching one over two on 36 count fawn by picture this plus, um, definitely one of my favorite fabrics. And here is my progress. So I'm really enjoying this one. I was able to, honestly, I can't remember where I was last. So I'll insert a picture of where I was last. Cause I think I did this. Um, I finished the flower and then got like all of this done as well. So I felt like that was really good. Um, again, the fabric, oh, amazing. I'm so glad I got a huge cut of this because I just love it. It's so pretty. The modeling is amazing and like every color shows up on it super well. It's a good, good neutral. So I've been really, really enjoying this project. I brought it with me, like I said, to that catapult place and I just stitched on like the big blocks, like the basket down here. And it's just awesome. The one over two looks amazing on 36 count. Picture this plus. Because in my opinion, their fabrics are like a little bit of a tighter weave, which I'm assuming must be from the dyeing process. And it's just, it looks so good. But the flosses, oh, they're so pretty. So pretty. So I'm really loving that. And it fits, everything fits so good in this bag. This bag is huge and this piece of fabric is huge. So I love that. I, I actually asked Alexis to send me her dimensions because I like this size so much. Um, I understand that maybe not everyone wants a huge project bag, but I, I love it. <laughs> uh, the next project, uh, actually the last cross stitching project that I worked on this week is again in a me made bag and I lined it with this like spider web fly fabric. And the project that I have in here is my haunted house sampler by Twin Peak Primitives. I just love this one. And finally a farm girl, she pulled this one out and I think either the end of last month or yeah, I think so. And last month or sometime, maybe the beginning of October sometime, but I saw her progress on it and it just made me want to pull mine out. So I did, I didn't get very far on it to be honest. And I think the reason why is I'm stitching this on a 28 count picture this plus fog. Love the fabric, super pretty. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's like a slight modeling to this and it's just stunning. Um, I really like the creamy, like milky white shade. I feel like it would work for a lot of projects. My problem though, uh, I think I'm just not a 28 count stitcher anymore. I don't know. Cause the more I worked on this, so here's my progress, the more I realized that I don't like stitching two over two anymore. <laughs> I love the way it works, or sorry, the way it looks, don't get me wrong. The way it looks is so pretty. It's just like so full coverage. And I feel like even these orange shades, you can really tell there's a subtle difference to the oranges. Whereas if I were probably stitching this like 36 count one over one, um, or sorry, one over two, I bet you would barely be able to notice the difference. So I like that you can see all that detail, but the thread management is just not as easy and simple as it is when you're only stitching with one thread. So yeah, I don't know but I did get a little bit done. I honestly don't remember where I was last. Hopefully I have a picture and I was able to put that up in here if I have one, but um, yeah, I don't know. I'll probably pull this out when I have a, a hankering for <laughs> two over two, I don't know. I do love the way it looks though. And this is another Mad For Minders needle minder, again with a John James gold needle. 
And did I mention that the John James gold needles are in the Floss Toss ladies shop now? I don't know if I mentioned that. <laughs> I already forgot. I'm losing it, people. I'm losing it. And I'm just using the Call for DMCs for this one. I love these colors. Aren't they amazing? They're just so fun. And then I am using these acrylic floss drops that I buy off of Amazon. They're just super affordable for me and they are awesome. I mean, they just keep my threads looking so nice. Um, I have these cut really long because I have been doing a loop start and that's been really helping with the management of the threads and I feel like it makes my stitches look nice because I think that's the thing that was killing me was I felt like my two over two stitches just don't look as neat as my one over two but of course they don't I mean you'd have to like really really take your time to perfectly lay down both of those threads every time you're doing an x and a lot of the time it's like late at night when I'm stitching and we're watching tv as well and I just kind of want to stitch I just want to go with the flow <laughs> but those are all of my projects that I've worked on this week um I did want to mention that I have been watching a couple of different floss tubes I mentioned finally a farm girl I love her channel I've liked her channel for a while now and I mentioned a while ago um, I think her channel name is day by day with Dana well her daughter started a channel and it's world on a string by Dara I believe and I just love her she's so sweet I love her progress on her projects and um, she's put out a few videos so it's a newer floss tuber and yeah hopefully you guys can go check her out and enjoy as much as I have um the next thing I want to mention though is a project bag that I made. So I've never tried making one of these vinyl front bags and as you can see mine's not perfect. You can kind of see the wrinkles in my lining fabric. That's because I, I messed up the cut of my fabric but that's okay. It was my first try and I am really, I mean I'm proud of this. I feel like my corners look pretty good. I mean for first time <laughs> and the binding turned out great so I'm super happy with this I like how the zipper looks um I think I prefer the size that Alexis made hers I like them a little bit bigger but this will fit I mean this fits everything and it's a little bit more portable so I guess I like both um and this fabric I picked up from Gigi's quilts in Yelm there Yelm Washington oh, you know what I just realized though this I put the fabric the wrong freaking way I meant to put it this way gosh darn it that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, I really like this. It's super cute. It's like bats and cats and candelabras and cauldrons and pumpkins. And it kind of reminds me of Quakers <laughs> or like, I don't know, more retro fabrics, like 70s. So I really like it. That one was a fun one. I definitely want to make more. Um, I picked up the vinyl at Gigi's as well. And so I picked up like, I think all of it had left of a cut of it and it was so easy to sew. The way that the Elizabeth Ann can stitch, the way she shows you how to make the little binding and everything made it to where I didn't need to get a Teflon foot or anything like that. I was able to just use my zipper foot actually to do the entire bag. And I really like using my zipper foot. I don't know why. I just find it so much easier to use. Um, maybe because I like that tiny margin. I don't like when there's a huge margin. So I just, I really enjoyed it. It was awesome. So that was a fun little adventure into my sewing. And the only knitting that I did this week is a little bit on my half and half triangle wrap. Um, I'm almost done actually. I only have a little bit left to go. I'm sure you guys are all sick of seeing this. So <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about it much longer. Oh, it's a little dusty though. So I'm gonna sneeze. <sighs> I knew it. I need to dust my, this is my sewing table. <laughs> my sewing machine is over that way and um, I haven't dusted it for a while. <laughs> okay, so yeah, my half and half triangles wrap. In this, I'm using my cones of yarn. Um, I think you guys can see behind me, I have a lot of cones of yarn and all of those are Holst Super Soft, just like this one. And this is the Holst Super Soft Tobacco. The cone is still massive. I still have tons left. Um, I think we'll have enough to knit a few sweaters out of this as well, which I probably will. Um, I think I want like some loose, easy pullovers and some that are really cropped that I can wear with my overalls in like the fall, uh, but lightweight. And one thing I noticed with this wool is that although it's very lightweight, it's very warm. And I like that myself personally. So this shawl though, hmm. I think she's too big. <laughs> um, either it's my gauge that's off or I really couldn't 
I couldn't visualize how large it was actually going to be. I think because I've watched so many knitting channels and the knitting channels I watch that have stitched this, they, when they show the project and they're wearing it, it doesn't look that big, but I'm looking at this and mine is way too big to wear as a shawl. So I think what I'm going to do is use it as a blanket. I think I've mentioned that before in other videos that I'm just going to use it as a blanket on my couch. Um, I might use it as a shawl around the house, but I don't really imagine it being one that I wear out as a shawl. I am using the call for needle size as well, which is 3.25 millimeter, um, which is a US three. And they're very small needles. These are my Chowgu interchangeables. They're my favorite needles. These are the four inch tips and I love them. They're awesome. So definitely recommend the needles. I love the yarn. I know it's not going to be a yarn for everyone. Um, even if you just have an allergy to lanolin and you wash and wash and wash this yarn, it's not going to be something that you can put next to skin and you feel like, wow, this is so comfortable and soft and smooth because it is like the actual hair of the fiber itself, the wool is more coarse in texture. Um, it's not really a fine micron wool or anything like that. So it is, it's a little itchy, <laughs> but in my opinion, it's just fine. So I really like black and brown. I think I've mentioned that quite a few times and I'm excited about this project. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is probably knit a couple of really like some basic sweaters out of both the black and the brown and maybe just a shawl out of this brown because I'm really loving this. Um, I have some yarn in stash though that is similar to this brown that I think I want to knit a shawl with first. I don't know. I've been really wanting to play with my stash more. Um, I have quite a bit of yarn. I think you guys can see behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like tons of yarn in both of these baskets and I just need to work through my stash. So I don't know. You have to let me know if you're interested in any kind of videos that have to do with knitting or even just videos that have to do with the sweaters that I have knit because I do have a whole bin of sweaters that I've knit and I, I do keep photos of all the sweaters that I've given away or I've knit for other people. Um, so I've knit quite a few, but I don't know, I'm kind of at a loss right now. When I look at my stash, I'm not inspired. Even though I, like there's plenty of yarns in there that I love. I just haven't found the right patterns. I guess that's it. So yeah, let me know if you're interested in more knitting content. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I love these two colors together. It's absolutely beautiful. Just if you are someone who has any kind of wool allergies or sensitivities to your skin in general, I wouldn't I wouldn't say to use the whole super soft. It's just, it's a very coarse wool. So um, I would be mindful of that. And I always try to mention that because I know that I gush about the yarn because I love it. It's such a good value, especially if you're someone who loves like say you knit like selbu mittens or things like that, I can imagine how absolutely warm they would be if you used the whole super soft. Um, it kind of reminds me of like Ralma or what else? I guess kind of like Jameson and Smith's, but it's finer. It's very fine. It is a light fingering weight. Uh, that's not for everyone. <laughs> so be mindful. It may not be for you, but it's such a good, good deal for what it is that I love it. Um, I think I keep looking at this one behind me. I really want to knit something with this. It's so pretty. <laughs> I actually, I knit a shawl out of this and I never wear the shawl. I should have wore it today. Well, anyways, I think that is actually everything that I have to mention, but I did want to talk about StitchCon. So, um, have you guys gotten your invoice? Did you pay it? What are we thinking? Uh, I got into weekend A and I did pay my invoice. So I, I think I'm going. The only thing that I wouldn't go for is if something ends up happening to my daughter. But as far as I know right now, I'll be going. I am so excited. I cannot wait. Um, I even got the chance to like talk to Stephanie just to kind of reassure some things that were going on. And she was so, so kind and so sweet. And same with Pam. They're amazing. <laughs> so I'm super excited. Uh, you guys have to let me know if you got in or what weekend you're going to be at. I'm just so excited. I cannot wait. I kind of feel bad because it's actually, it is on my husband's birthday. His birthday is the 8th and I don't know. I'm just an idiot. I didn't realize I don't think I looked at the dates. Maybe that's why, or you know what? Maybe I was thinking about weekend B's dates were actually weekend A's dates. I don't know. Um, I haven't gotten, I haven't booked a hotel or anything yet because so far I haven't seen, usually there's like, or so I think there is like a rate card sort of thing that's on the StitchCon website for hotels. I haven't seen that yet, but on the web, like not the website, 
on the Instagram page that's for 2023 attendees. I saw that tons of people have already booked their rooms, but uh, I'm still young and I'm in good physical health, so I don't mind having to walk a bit of a ways to get to the um, convention center where it's held at because I think that the La Quinta is where the late night room is I think and I would love to be in there because I am I'm a night owl so I would love to go to that I think it'd be super fun but honestly I don't mind if I just gotta walk a few minutes down the road <laughs> to get to the convention center so I'm just gonna book a room probably next month sometime um, or whenever those rate cards come out so yeah that is everything. You'll have to let me know. Like I said, are you guys going to Stitch Con? What weekend did you get in at? Um, if you see me there, say hi. Don't be scared. I love people. I'm like a talker, so I'm sorry if I don't let you talk. <laughs> uh, I think it'll just be me, me, not my husband and daughter. I think they're going to stay home and probably do something for his birthday weekend, so that'll be fun. Fun for them. Good little uh, daddy-daughter date. <laughs> So I'm excited. It should be really fun. Let me know what you worked on today and what you guys have been enjoying. Um, I think that's everything. So have a great day, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week and stay safe out there. Bye. <laughs>